the world outside is a place to escape from, my go-to project is a simple junk journal. I get something really personal like this when I'm done, and I'm upcycling and using my stash as I go. I feel good. So in this week's video I'm sharing my process for making a journal, a single signature junk journal using book pages, papers and card. We'll make up the signature and sew it into the cover, all in really clear and easy steps. And if paper and junk journals are your passion like me, then hit that subscribe button and ring the little notification bell. I've got so many more videos and ideas to come. The process begins choosing pages from some books and these are just a sample of some of the books that I'm obsessing with at the moment and I think you can probably see why. Every book offers something different for use in your junk journal, be that the diagrams on the page or it could also be the weight or the texture or the glossiness or absorbency of the paper. This one has a glorious vintage feel to it through the yellowing of the paper edges. I recently used this Victorian flower album for making tags so I cut up some of the pages. But the paper's really thick and it's double sided so I would consider using this for a cover perhaps. This little book of herbs is fabulous for covering up a rather too junky sheet of paper that we might use or for otherwise decorating a page. The size and shape of this little women novel seems to work really well if I turn it on its side and then fold that to make a page in a journal. So we can be creative in lots of different ways to use our old books. Sometimes it's the images in a book that really speak to me and in this one Given the glorious nature of those pictures, I would consider putting these on the cover of a journal. And I do have a bit of a request for help here. I love this music book. I love the paper. And although I bought it for junk journaling, I am so struggling to cut it up. So. If you have any way in which you could help me get over this, then do drop a comment down below. And last weekend at a car boot sale, I found this fabulous 1930s book of knitting patterns. It immediately reminded me of Barbara's channel here on YouTube, which is 49 Dragonflies. And Barbara makes the most gorgeous journal pages using vintage papers and embellishments and ephemera. So absolutely check out Barbara's channel if you like that sort of theme. And I've just pulled a mixture from my stash or from out of those books. I've selected pages with images that seem to speak to me like this one. I've brought some music paper into this little stack. I've got a more robust and plain sheet here that would be great for writing lists in the journal. A more academic style page with a graph. This is a purple paisley piece of scrapbook paper, which goes with the colour palette that I've chosen for this journal. More music paper and a sheet from a children's book with some purple decorative embellishments on it. Here's a bit more from that physics book and a sheet that I've chosen for the fold out the middle of the journal. I really liked the lavender hues in the sky here. And this is a great piece of junk cardstock that might work for the cover, we'll see. Some alternatives for the cover are this map page, which is fairly thick paper. Or I might treat myself to using this jolly piece of 12x12 cardstock. And finally something botanical, probably for the first page in the journal. I'm making a traveller's notebook size journal today, which is 11.5cm by 21cm, and that's roughly four and a half inches by eight inches and the pages inside are just a little bit smaller so they are 10 centimeters by 19 centimeters which is four inches by about seven and a half inches. I've chosen the 12 by 12 cardstock for the cover. I'm making really good use of it. The paper is double-sided. You can see the pattern on both sides. And rather than cut the back of the cover down to size, I've decided to keep this little fold on and turn it into a pocket. And now all I'm doing is using my paper trimmer, it's a Fiskars paper trimmer, 
to just cut each of those pages down to size. I like the first page of my signatures to have some form of impact to go with the colour theme. So I've chosen one that I think works for that. And it's a botanical sheet of glossy paper that was big enough to fold up and make into a little pocket on the inside. I think Little Women works well sideways. As does this little sheet of music paper. This larger A4 sheet does need trimming down. And I just keep using my cutting mat to check that I've got the dimensions right. I like this little graph, so that will go on the front of one of the pages. And the excess just gets folded in again to make another pocket when I glue it down. You might have a gardening book in your stash, so maybe you could also include one of these pages in your junk journal. And I'm just measuring and trimming here to keep as much of that blue flower as possible. And similarly, just measuring and cutting this lilac sheet so that that's down to size. And as this lovely lilac page is just a little bit too wide, I've decided to add some detail in the form of a punch down the side. So I'm just punching a pretty flower detail here and I think that's an Anna Griffin punch. So do you think you'll have a go at this? Or maybe you've already made a few journals. It would be lovely if you could let me know. I really enjoy hearing about your project, so drop a comment down below. It's at this point in the process that I start to feel good about using up some of my stash. And I like to get really good value from all of my craft supplies. And making little journals like this seems to be an economical way of having a craft project that feels really good without spending a lot of money. And here's the centre page that's going to act as a really strong feature in the journal. And a special piece of scrapbook paper, it's that purple paisley paper. And I decide I'm going to keep that torn edge and just make it into a little pocket. A collection of pages, it's as easy as that. I do take a bit of time deciding which order the pages should go into the signature. Really what I'm looking for is contrast, so that's contrast of patterns, contrast of sizes, and maybe also texture, so that all of those are mixed up throughout the signature. And here's the order of pages that I've gone for. You can see a selection of tippins and tags and envelopes around the cutting board and we'll be adding these as decorative embellishments in next week's video. And the next step is a really easy binding of the signature into the cover. I'm using string and this length is about three times the depth of the signature. I make a mark in the centre with a pencil and also a couple of marks either side, six centimetres either side of the midpoint. And we do exactly the same on the cover. Here's the midpoint. Here's a point six centimetres to the right and the left. And I'm just making holes on those marks with my needle. It's a little bit tougher on the signature, of course, but not too difficult. 
I normally have between 10 and 12 sheets in a signature, so that makes it possible to push the needle through. At this point, the bulldog clip is really useful for holding the sheets in place. And now just attaching the signature to the cover, starting from the outside and working in, through the top hole, and back through the centre hole from the inside of the signature through to the outside of the cover. So we're working in a figure of eight. So you can see the first big stitch here. And following that figure of eight, I'm passing the needle back again from the outside through the bottom hole. You can keep the string quite loose at this stage until we get to the end when we'll tighten it all up. And finally passing the needle back through that centre hole through to the outside. And all we have to do now is tighten it up and tie a knot in the string. I like to keep the needle on the string just to make it a bit easier to tie and I finish off with a bow. And that's it, one really easy junk journal using your craft supplies and your old book pages. Next week we'll have a lot of fun decorating this with pockets and tags and belly bands so hit the subscribe button and ring the little notification bell so you don't miss that. And check out my other videos on making tags and pockets if you fancy having a bit more of a play. I'll see you next week. <laughs>